Greetings! Welcome to the Northmen. Today I'm evading some paper! Eh, uh, hooray! Well, the title doesn't actually say on the box, but on the top here it says, or on the rule book, Paper Tales! I have no clue why it's called Paper Tales, but all the illustrations in the game are kind of a South Park feel with uh, layers of paper on it, and it works really nice. I really enjoy the artwork in this game, and it's consistent through all of the cards. So, thumbs up to that. This is all you see in the game, and that is all you get. You have a lot of tokens for various purposes. You have a scoring track with markers on it, and a round track. So, four rounds, and the game is over. Each player will receive a set of buildings, five different buildings, which they can build during the game. Also, a handout, two-sided. It's very handy, and it explains almost everything in the game. So, thumbs up to the illustrations, thumbs up to the iconogra iconography. So, let's deal out these cards. The game goes from two to five players. I have not tried it with two players, but three and four and five? Okay, I'm basing my review on that. So, let's deal out cards, two players. So, each player gets a deck of five cards, taken out of the hand, and it's drafting. And drafting in this game is, I get five cards now, I choose one to keep, and I pass the next cards to my player to the left in this round. In the next round, it's to my right. So from my player to my, my right, I get four cards. I choose one of those cards to keep and pass the three cards left. And we do this until we have chosen five cards to keep. And that is drafting. It works. It's a very standard drafting, but it's a very essential as well. Okay, now I've selected my five cards now. So what I do is to deploy them. The game is played in six steps. First, it's recruitment. This is a drafting phase. Then deployment, which I'm going to do now, and add cards. Then we have wars. After that, it's income. Get money back to your uh, stash. Uh, construction, and finally, aging. So let's go with deployment first. In front of me, I have a, a kind of a grid. A two times two grid in front of me. So I can do this, and this, and this, and this. All players do this at the same time, so we can know how many cards are added, but not which cards. And when all are ready, we just flip it. Ta -da! So, now we pay the cost. Two, three, four, and zero. So four money. So, I'm a, maybe have, I may have jumped the gun here, because we all start the game with three money, <laughs> and uh, I can't afford it. So I have to just discard one I can't afford. That's too bad. But let's just say I, had, I could afford it. Next is war. Then it's important to see what's in front and what is behind. The cards in front have a shield value, or well, all cards have a shield value, but what's in front matters. You take the sum of the shield value and then compare it with your neighbors, as in Seven Wonders. If you can beat them, you get points. If not, nothing happens. So there's no punishment for not winning the wars, but you will miss getting the points. And that's it. Uh, we've gone on to income. So you get two money, plus any additional income you might have from your buildings and units. So all these cards are units and these are buildings. Then we go on to construction. Now we can build or upgrade and or upgrade one building at a time. So in f you have five buildings to choose from. In four rounds, you can guess you only get to, you can't get all of them. Uh, and after that, you have aging. So these aging markers are on these cards. So let's say it looked like this before the round started. We come to aging. For each card with an aging token, they will die. And then I will add an aging token, aging token on all the remaining cards or units on, in front of me. That's a round. I'm, I'm able to keep one card from this round to the next, and then we draft again. We do this for four rounds, and we see who wins. And that is how simple the game is. So I'm just gonna do, let's dig some deeper in the game. One thing I really enjoy in this game is the iconography. So you have the handout, the two-sided ones. Uh, so this one tells you the game turn, with all these steps involved. And here we have all the other information that might be available in the cards. So I'm just going to take this away for a minute. So let's say, for instance, the giant snake. It has two icons. It has an ability in the war phase, here, and in the income phase, here. Simple. If there's a question about the icons, it's probably here. So this one will relate to the aging phase. This one has for a war, based on the number of meats in your kingdom. This one has an ability, 
when the unit is put into play, it's all explained easily. You put one extra aging on each of your character units. And this one will prevent a unit from dying in the dying or aging step. So the, all the icons are excellently explained. And this icon here just says there are three copies of this card in the game. So this one, Necromancer, there's only one copy in the game. It helps you for drafting if you want to make sure to get it now or maybe gamble and getting it later. And of course, one copy, you have to take it now if you really want it. And finally, we have the buildings. So here is a barracks, for instance. This is a level 2 barracks and a level 1 barracks. Uh, so each player has the identical sets of buildings and they are always possible to upgrade. So I can play, play this and pay one lumber to get level 1 building. Level 1. Then I get access to this feature here, which triggers in at each war. Uh, the level 2 is on the back side, but I also have the information here, so I don't have to flip it around. And this is the cost to upgrade. Now, I can upgrade later by paying these costs and getting this one. I get three points in the end game. For each, well, if I have at least, <clears throat> if I have at least one level two building, I can have three cards in the front row instead of just two. So it doesn't matter how many level two buildings you have, you only get one extra card. Now, I can also choose to upgrade it as, as soon as I build it by paying a lumber plus an additional lumber and the meat. If you can pay that, I just play it down and flip it at once. So it's a very instant upgrade. Uh, if I had a building in play from before and I want another one, I have to pay two gold per existing building. And this doesn't say anywhere on the handouts, which is a shame, actually. That is all I have to say about Paper Tales. I have invaded this game and I have fallen in love with it as well. This is a drafting game. So you draft cards just as in Seven Wonders, you compare cards just as in Seven Wonders with the Wars, and it's basically the same feeling of the game. However, this game has a whole lot better iconography. <laughs> Playing this game is a breeze. You have everything set up here on the card, you know exactly in which order things are going to happen, you know people are going to die, you know how much money you need, you know which buildings there are. So everything here is clear and crisp. Now, this game is my new Seven Wonders for the next step game for newcomers. Uh, Seven Wonders has, is a great game and it goes up to seven players, which is also a good thing, but it takes a longer time to explain the game. You need to explain all the icons, how they work, how the wonders work, how the scoring works with the, the green cards and the blue cards. So Seven Wonders is a more of a hurdle to get to new players. This game is a breeze. You have one deck of cards, no ages. You have this with handouts, which tells you everything, and all players get an equal amount of building cards. The tokens are great. The graphics and illustrations are also excellent in this game. I love the illustrations here. So everything just sets out better than Seven Wonders for the casual or the next uh, entry game. So this one gets a permanent uh, add addition to my collection next to Seven Wonders because Seven Wonders has expansions, you know, cities and leaders and the Babel expansions, which <laughs> is totally not for newcomers because there are so many layers there that you, you cannot introduce to new players, especially with leaders. You start drafting with leaders and you have all these different icons, you have no idea what you're doing. And this game has none of that. It's so simple, it's so clean, but... There is a couple of bots in this game as well. So, you draft. You pick your cards. Oh, yes, I'm going to use this. And you get more cards. Oh, yeah. And this one, yes, okay. I'm going to build a great combo. I just need one more card. Come on. And that player knows what you're collecting because he has paid attention to the cards he has sent to you. And he knows, oh, you really need this card. I'm going to keep it and send this one to you. So you, it's called hate drafting. Well, that, that, the, the player drafting to you is aware of what you have and what you need and it intentionally denies you from getting what you want. Not because it benefits him, but because you will be hurt by it. So, of course, it's a gamble to do this strategy anyway because, well, you might not even have the card you need. It might not even be in the deck. It could be somewhere in the bottom here. So this gamble to do this, but you're especially vulnerable to the hate drafting. 
especially if you have cards already uh, in the display here so you, he can the player can uh, easily see what you might want easily uh, that is one issue of the game uh, but then if you all are all new to the game you have no idea what cards are going to show up you don't know you just take some cards what sounds good okay at least you have a starting point with the buildings that you need this and this to build the buildings okay so you collect those things so for beginners, you just do what you think is wise and build the buildings. And that is one issue as well I have. I'm not sure if the buildings are worth it. Now, I've played this many times now. Uh, also, <laughs> none of the games are similar. So I, I can't really say if the game is really balanced with the buildings and units. Because all the games are different and I love that. It's amazing that it can go in all these directions depending on what cards you get and what players you play with and how they play the, their cards. It's so different. So it's a thumbs up for that. Uh, but war is very beneficial to win. You, get, you can get about six points for each, each round here. You can even get more points if you have special powers that gives you more points during the war. So losing the wars, you don't lose anything, but you don't gain those points. And okay, six points for one war. One building upgrade cost me, it gives me three points. Also, I have to uh, intentionally lose the wars to get the resources I need to build those buildings. I have to have weak uh, units in front here just to get the resources. So you have to spend a lot of resources to get those buildings. And I'm not sure if it weighs up with what you get in the long term because seriously long term in this game is four rounds and it really isn't that long so i have a hard time seeing that the buildings are good i always build the buildings at least two and maybe three because it gives me benefit but i can't say if it's good enough but of course if you have the buildings that gives you benefit for the wars and there are many buildings that gives you benefit in the wars you will get more points War is important in this game. And as well, yeah, that is one of the things I might have against this game. But if you play with new gamers, they won't mind this, they won't pay attention to that. But if you play with gamers that know this game uh, from before, you will understand that they will go for you and win the combat. Because combat is so much better than the buildings, I think. I'm not sure. I might be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. because. I'm usually going for the buildings because they're more fun to have. You get, they give you a permanent bonus and they don't die. You don't put this on them and they don't die. And you have some cars that are just so much better than other cars. Like the one that doesn't die and uh, the more he ages, the more points he gets. And he also adds his, uh, his strength to do combat even though it's in the back. Uh, so there are many, many different ways to win this game. Well, that being said, I do enjoy this game a whole lot. It's so simple to get into, it's so simple to uh, teach to other players, and you don't really have to explain anything on the way. You just hit, look at the cards. It's all there. So, definite thumbs up. This is from Catch Up Games, uh, also distributed by Blackrock Games. Uh, Paper Tales is a definite recommendation from me. Just keep in mind, it might seem a bit random based on the buildings and the cards you get, but that's kind of this, the fun of the game, to have the randomness. And Seven Wonders isn't that, that big of a difference either. It's, it's a lot of randomness there as well. But okay, thank you so much for watching uh, Paper Tales. And as always, please check out my Patreon account at patreon.com slash takras to see how you can influence which game I'm going to review in the future. And you can also support me financially, and that is really appreciated. Otherwise, please share and like this video. I really need your help to get out there uh, among well, people who are like-minded and want to know what, what games are out there. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I see you next time. See ya, and keep plundering! Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.